daily driving a 2022 Acura RDX and top trim. So I've had this for a little while. I'm gonna go over everything about dailying it with you. Okay. Starting with what this is, it's a luxury SUV, normal size, two rows, not a cheater three row, doesn't have an option for one. So then this one also has super handling all wheel drive, which is really good all wheel drive. Yes, and I can verify, and I will throughout this video, that this is one of the best all wheel drive systems. And because this is the A spec, we are able to option out a full red interior, which looks really cool, but in the interior, the infotainment is not a touchscreen. It is controlled by this trackpad. And it's true touch. True touch. It's, it's kind of weird. And now we got to get into the competition for this. Pretty much everyone has a competitor for this. What do you think the main competition is? I would say the Lexus, the RX350. Yes, and there are a whole bunch more, so I'm going to go over the full list. Audi Q5, BMW X3, Infiniti QX50, Mercedes GLC, a Volvo XC60, a Lincoln Corsair, American stuff, Cadillac XT5, Land Rover Discovery Sport, Genesis GV70, and lastly, a Buick Enclave. So we've driven quite a bit of those. Yeah, uh, not the Buicks though. We don't drive Buicks for not some yet, reason. Not yet. But uh, that's a lot of competition. I feel like everyone wants this segment to be good for them. This is a very popular segment. So getting into the car, keyless entry, right? Yep. Obviously. It has proximity touch, so you don't need to push a button to get in or out, but that's awesome, right? Very luxurious. And it's push to start, which is cool. And you can remote start it from the key fob without a subscription. <laughs> that is very good. Okay, and then when we're locking the car, when we click the button on the proximity door handle or on the key fob, the mirrors fold in. That is definitely a feature of luxury. The trunk is kicked to open and it's power, obviously. That's a convenience feature. But you know what sucks is that there is a trunk close button, but there is no lock button next to the trunk close button. Oh, that is annoying. Isn't it the worst? Because you're like, did I lock the car or whatever? And then you got to click that and then you got to go around and like touch a door handle. And especially if you have stuff in your hand already. Yep. But the trunk room is really good. I went over to your house this weekend and I brought my baby uh, high chair or whatever for eating at. Yep. Shout out Maxi Cozy for hooking us up with us. And like it fit there perfectly, like so much room for baby stroller stuff and a baby seat in the back. This is quite a large SUV in this class. But you know what sucks about the back seat and baby stuff? What's that? No baby shades. Oh yeah, that's, and, a, that's a big miss. And we recently drove the MDX, which is the bigger one of this, with a three row that had baby shades built in. Come on, Acura. Come on, Acura. And then some other good baby stuff, we have rear seat monitoring and like seeing all your seatbelts like when you get into the car. And it still shows me while I'm yeah, driving. Yeah, you gotta click, I think, okay on one of them. It's, it's kind of annoying to yeah. get rid of it, but it's, it's good because if you have kids back there that are pulling their seatbelts off, at least you'll know. And I also noticed that it's a top down view, which is interesting. Yeah, it's, it's a nice, it's a good graphic. And then seat comfort and everything and uh, room. You fit behind yourself at six foot one and a half. Dude, so comfortable in this, like no complaints. I feel like it has even more than RX. Yeah, front seat, back seat, lots of room. And because this is the Platinum Elite A spec, which is the advanced package in the States, pretty much the A spec with more features, you actually get more adjustability in your seat than you would otherwise. That is very so, nice. So you can do your bolsters, like reach down there. And oh, then yeah. once you start doing that, the screen's gonna change and you're gonna get more options, which is a little tricky to use but you get, you know, yeah, more I can, comfortable seats. I can actually adjust my bolsters and I have up-down lumbar, which is very good. Heated and cooled and you have an auto. Love so, auto. So that, you know, when it gets cold or too hot or whatever, it'll automatically adjust for that. And then a heated steering wheel as well. Yeah, and a heated steering wheel is pretty good. The button's on the wheel, so that's easy to find. And I also noticed heated seats in the back. Luxury, bro, top, yeah, yeah. top trim. But only presets on the driver's side. No presets here. Ah, uh, yes. Does that really matter though for dealing? No, not really. The MDX did have them on both though, which was yeah. interesting. I, I feel like this is okay to not have that. For sure. And then back to the red interior, like that's the coolest thing. I love red interior. That makes you smile <laughs> so much more every single day when you get into your car. Can you get red on red? I don't know. Yeah. I feel like they're weird about that. I kind feel of like stuff. you can't. Like it's kind of worth getting the gray so you can get the red interior. They're like, we don't want this to end up on worst specs Instagram page, so we are going to limit it. Yeah. All right, now let's test out our reverse and 360 cameras. Put this baby in reverse. Okay. And we have 360 camera, which is nice. Because it's top trim. You can set it up so that you can see your reverse all the way across, and your 360 camera button is on your turn stock, oddly placed. 
Yeah, that's kind of a weird place. I didn't notice until you pointed it out. But if we keep clicking it, then we can see our front wheels and everything. Oh, that's nice. Which is a nice feature to have. For sure. Okay, let's get moving. Let's get moving. Floored it. This thing's quick. I like it. Okay. So if you were to hit the highway, you needed to do some passing. Would you be able to do some passing with this power? I could pass so many people in this. You ready for it? Ready. Horsepower and torque. 272 horsepower, 280 pound-feet of torque from a two-liter turbo four-cylinder. And you like the power, you like the delivery of this. Is it fun to kind of just like shift gears and floor it here? We're not talking about handling yet. No, no. Just, just flooring it and stuff. Sport, lower, I'm going uphill. Very torquey, very pleasant to drive. And you are in sport mode right now, right? Yes. Okay, we got this dynamic mode button so we can go to sport, we can go normal, comfort, snow. This is a luxury car, and this has the most luxurious animations for that ever. 10 out of 10, but this does not have an individual button like the MDX had for modes. Right. And then also, if you have it in sport mode or any of the modes, it automatically upshifts, which detracts slightly from the fun factor. Okay, and then is there an issue with the pumped-in audio? No, it, there's none. Here, we'll go sport. I feel like there is no pumped-in audio at all. Exactly. No, just natural four-cylinder, okay sound. A good amount of sporty, but it doesn't sound crazy from the outside, so let's listen to the... Outside. So back to driving to work, say we're in normal. We're in normal shifting. Lane keep assist and radar cruise on the highway. How is it? The lane keep assist is good for assisting you from leaving the lane, but it's not good, good lane centering. Like the lane centering works all right. It's, I think, a whole level behind current MDX and current Civic, if I'm correct with their technology Right, it's packages. a generation back. Yeah. Okay. So like a little disappointing. Jacob, I'm looking out for you. I'm looking out for all the viewers who drive to work in traffic. This may not be the correct vehicle for you if you want to just be like hands off cruising. Like a GV70 in comparison. Ah, yes. Would be like way, way nicer. Yeah. So then some safety stuff. We've got blind spot monitoring, these things right here that really like glow nicely. We've got front collision assist and it'll shoot up in your head up display as well here if you get too close, like bright yellow. Which I noticed. It, it goes a little prematurely, but I always like to set press cars premature, you know, just so you can see what the car does without like. Yeah, it's like, it's like a big blob. Yeah, and it, it's good. And then with the head up display, we do have hard buttons on the left to control that and you'll only get that on the top trim. And then the last thing in this area with daily driving, every time you get in and out, Every day you're gonna start the car, you're gonna see a really cool animation. It's like top notch, just like the gauge mode's changing. And I think so much better than uh, like the Genesis, you know, that oh, sound that they make. Yeah, yeah. And like, this is pretty impressive considering this isn't a full digital display. Yeah, and, and you've got the Speedo in the middle, you got the Speedo in your head up display, so I don't mind having the tag. Even though they're difficult to read a little bit here and there, they do kind of look cool. They look really cool, the red. Yeah, it's interesting. So I was driving the MDX all last week the RDX this week, I have gotten used to the infotainment screen with the trackpad. How do you feel about it? How would you compare it to someone who's maybe test driving one of these and hasn't gotten used to it? I think they're gonna need a lot more than their half hour or hour, whatever their test drive is. Like you, it's it's been months with all of Acura systems and I'm still not fully used to it. It has wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, and the wireless chargers down there below. Are you all right with using the Apple CarPlay even though it reacts slightly differently? Yeah. I can totally get used to that. Because it's not true touch. It's not right where top left is not top left. Exactly. And, and it doesn't slide all the way across like a normal trackpad either. It's like you can get like two movements if you swipe all the way left to right, it seems. What I would really like though is if this was a touch screen. Like it's it's almost close enough where this volume knob is right here. It's like, you know, an extra like six inches past that. So yeah. it's, it's, it's almost there. I think they're going to have to update it and bring it more forward like Lexus did to all theirs. But we've got a volume knob. We've got tuning buttons. But having them up here is kind of stupid, you know? Yeah. Like it's like too far forward. On the MDX, it was down where the trackpad was and it was way more convenient. Kind of like Mercedes style. Right. Or even uh, Mazda. Yes because Mazda doesn't want to put anything on their, on their dash. Yeah, and you can't touch those. <laughs> or you can when you're parked or whatever. I think that was old Mazda. Oh, yeah, the, that's the right. And one was like, no, nah, not at all. Yeah. You guys are going to hack the system again. We don't like this. Just more Jinba Itai. And then below that, full hard buttons climate control. 10 out of 10. Hey, Acura. No, this doesn't talk. You Warm my butthole. You don't talk to this car. <laughs> I don't like talking to the car stuff. And then the sound system, ELS 3D. It's really good. Do you like it? Yeah, I would say it's even 4D. It's actually really, really good. Yeah, just it's a, it's a solid system. 
So now's the part of daily driving where you have your one moment where you get to floor and take a turn. For me, living in the city, it would be merging onto the highway and doing a fast turn on an on-ramp for you. It'd be cliche corner and country roads. I'm gonna come to a complete stop and I'm going to brake boost this. Yuri, this thing rips off the line. It's actually really quick. Does it get your rocks hard though? Like, are you like stoked on, are you satisfied? Or is it kind of like, it's good enough to get me through? My rocks are a little bit soft right now. So, I mean, it's it's good for this class of car. I, I really, really like it. I would compare it like just below a BMW X3 M40i. Like that thing rips really hard. This isn't quite there. But this 10 speed auto is actually quite good. It's very smooth, like no real issues. Downshifts very quick. But are you gonna downshift it on your daily drive? You might. Uh, probably I not. I feel like no. No, I, I would probably downshift in the cliche corner. But before I got to cliche corner, I would change my suspension settings through my dynamic modes because this is the only trim that gets adaptive dampers. However, I completely lied because I do not notice a difference between any of the drive modes. Yeah. So if you're gonna get a lower trim, I feel like you're not missing out because of the adaptive dampers. Yeah, it's equally comfortable in all the adapter modes. So say on your daily drive, there's the same jerk tailgating you and you want to leave a nice big gap behind them so it looks like an idiot through cliche corner downshift with my paddle downshift and here we go oh dude this thing the back end wants to come around oh yuri this is even better than i remember the rdx handling i loved it before and look at this ah traction cut out even uh, though i have it on but that was still really good like i really tried to send it there that ford taurus behind you is way <laughs> back there i think the ford taurus is in the ditch that'll show him to try to mess with me but straight up this car rips really really hard like i i remember liking the rdx a lot and recommending it to a lot of people and i still would and this is in winter right now so what would be the continental recommended tire for an rdx that would be the viking contact 7 or in the summer the extreme contact dws 06 plus and rip extra hard with those that's right all right let's get you into this seat to talk about more daily driving stuff and stuff that i haven't even mentioned yet i want to talk about the daily walk up to my car and what it looks like okay so looks wise of this Acura and the Acura brand in general compared to the competition, are you happy with this or would you need something more? Like, would you rather have an Audi, a Cadillac, an Infiniti, a Buick? <laughs> and if you're looking for any of those cars, tsp.truecar.com, discounted price offers on new models. Okay, Yuri, so this is actually one of my favorite looking vehicles, as I said in the MDX. However, I'm not gonna go crazy and say that it's one of the best looking vehicles on the road, like I also said about that MDX and you corrected me. But anyways, this has the right amount of aggression to luxury, I think. Yeah, I think it's a good fit. There's definitely like more luxurious looking stuff, but like, okay, this over a Cadillac. Would you rather have a Cadillac XT5? No, this. Okay, how about a GV70? Because I feel like I kind of like the looks of a GV70 more. I think I do too as well. Land Rover Discovery. No, no. The big one, the Lexus RX. Uh, I think this actually looks better. That's a hard one for me. I, I kind of like the big, huge grill on the Lexus, but this looks awesome. We've got the new style grill. That, I mean, it's kind of like an old model. It's been around for like three years. Right. But it all looks good. The body lines are great. We've got like a, like a double body line back there. And with this paint, it's really nice. I would prefer the red paint but then you probably can't get the red interior and the red interior is like really, really cool. Yo, and in the States, they even have the PMC edition, which is like the craziest paint. That's pretty cool. And the taillights still look cool, nice lobster claws. And then we got a really cool exhaust back there, a little diffuser. I really like the exhaust tips. Like they're real AF and they're just nice big circles. We got just plain chill, dark wheels. Anything special about that or like a... No, they're just good. Yeah, so overall, I think it's a good looking SUV. Maybe not my favorite, but like nothing to complain about. But in this color, it blends in. People, please don't buy great cars. Yes. So seeing this in your office parking lot or your house uh, not gonna, driveway. I'm not going to look back. Yeah. But I'm also not going to be disappointed that I have it. Okay. I don't know which one I'd like the most like of all those. The GLC 63. <laughs> 63. I don't think this could be the no. 60, Maybe a 300. Yeah. You want a GLC 300 coupe? <laughs> we, can get you, we can get you one or of those for this. I, I might be able to get a GLC 43 without heated seats or something. <laughs> <laughs> 43 is too high. But no, because it's a uh, M340i as a competitor to this. No, no, but it, it sits too high. Oh, yeah. You know what? The Volvo XC60, I think, I would 100% be the most stoked on looks wise. But that's not aggressive. That's just luxury. It's just, yeah, it's yeah, just like, it's, it's classy. And it's, and it's a hipster a little bit. Yeah, it's definitely classy looking. And then, but this in the A spec is definitely the best looking. Yeah, like the, that balance of aggression. Or you're saying, you're talking about in the Acura line. In the Acura line. Yeah, 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 totally. Okay, that's our looks wise rant. And by the way, the listed fuel economy for this is 11.3 city, 9.1 highway, and 10.3 liters per 100 kilometers combined. 
I would like to talk about this general interior where it's actually quite nice. The materials are pretty decent. We have some suede-like materials up on the dash. There's minimal gloss black only around this shifter area. Other than that, I like this interior. Yeah, it's a very good mix of materials. I like this pattern here. And then because it's an A-spec, we got the D-shaped wheel, which like, doesn't really matter, but it's nice. And, and I like this material here on the sides. And too. I like the size of the steering wheel, the paddles also, like all, all the aluminum trim is very nice in here. But this shifter. Yeah. It's the weird one. It stays out of the way, but it does look good, but it is a little annoying, but I've gotten used to it. And then with the infotainment, I've gotten very used to it. I still don't like it, but I'm used to it. I don't like this palm rest thing where it's like, I, the position that it's in, I have to do this awkward kind of reach. I'd yeah, have to push it's back. The, it's, the, it's for right here, right? I don't know what this yeah. part of your hand is. Let us know what this is called because that's what you have to rest. Yeah. Not and, here. And it's nice. If they made it stick out any farther, it'd get in the way of the cup holders, which do fit a small cup and a medium cup just fine. Like the cup holders are staggered, so that's good. And then we got this slot right here where you plug in your phone. I've been using that for food. French fries, oh, yeah. bagels at Timmy's. Yeah, yeah. Like I shouldn't be eating bread and uh, dairy, but I've been getting the plain bagel toasted with butter and a slice of cheddar cheese. That's what I used to get. <laughs> and like once in a while, but my stomach's getting better. It's healing. That's Side good. note, doesn't matter. So what does matter though, is if you're in the drive-thru and you're sitting there and it's pretty early in the morning, what about the visors? They pass front, which blocks the sun right here. What about the side? Three, two, one. Full pass. Okay, that's good. Great job. You know what? Volvo won't do that. I think I forgot to mention earlier with all the seats folded down because some days you're going to have to move a bunch of stuff around. Yeah, this has a lot of room. Tons of room. Because you know what? I don't have my element right now. My brother's been driving it and there's like stuff I want to take to the garbage dump, but I just can't because I don't have this gigantic empty box that I used to have with me at like all times. So you just need a Raptor for garbage runs. Okay, so I'm going to imitate my going on an on-ramp and staying in the city drive through Cliche Corner here. How's that? Ooh, dude. Really <laughs> good. I feel like I could scare the crap out of some people on an on-ramp. Like you put a passenger in there, you're like, yo, look how fast this Acura goes. You like, wouldn't expect this. You're like, what, an Acura can handle that well? Shod, bro, shod. Super handling all-wheel drive. Shod is the real deal, and I think now it's time we get to the price. This one is $58,500. Canadian. Which is a very good price. Considering how well it handles, the amount of luxury, the lot of good features. Are there any features in this car for daily driving that are a deal breaker for you that you hate? or that like you need included? Uh, nothing would be a deal breaker, just things that would take some time getting used to like this trackpad and this shifter. For me, yeah. The, the infotainment, not my favorite. This has a 360 camera, so that's like awesome to have. I don't like not having the lock button on the trunk. Like, okay. I, I kind of hate that. All right. And the no baby shades. Yeah. Cause like you can get the ones that you, you suction cup on but yeah. then like you're you got suction cup in a luxury car like it, nah. it's so weird yeah but overall i think this would be a great daily and if you're looking to buy your own acura rdx hit up tsb.truecar.com people buy a lot of these rdx's on true car and most of them are getting a great price between msrp to two percent above but but don't stop looking at the competition because like this might not be for you hey i would recommend this like i recommended the previous rdx like i really like this suv check out gv70 i mean i feel yeah. like a gv70 comparison to this that that would like destroy this for like cool features and if you can spring for an x3 m40i if you want to go fast yes cool x4 Ugh. <laughs> <laughs>